Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. Let's do it. Um, Nalegia video. So, why were the Yugoslav partisans so good in World War II? I don't even know what he's... Yugoslav partisans in World War II. Right. So Yugoslavia was created after World War I. Right? And then it lasted... Let's go. Okay. My name's Connor. Hi. I like to learn about things and watch stuff. Preemptive like. No legia. Great channel. Original link to the video. Top of the description. Right below that. Link to the Discord. Love to have you. Pull up a chair, friend. Okay. Let's go. Ready. If you are not ready to learn... There is the door. Olmec is down the hall. You are in the wrong class. It is B period. With as many countries, armies, militia, and so on involved in the warfare, it's hard to keep track of every division or fighting force. For this reason, many often get overlooked or simply forgotten. One such resistance in the war that may not get as much credit as it's due is the Yugoslav partisans. Okay. Why does it say military administration with Serbia? The Yugoslav Partisans, officially the National Liberation Army and Partisan Detachment of Yugoslavia, was an anti-fascist, anti-Axis resistance force birthed from the Axis occupation of Yugoslavia. Generally considered to be the most effective resistance movement in the entire war, it was led by Josip Broz Tito and was essentially the military branch of the Unitary National Liberation Front under the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. The goal of these organizations was to fight the Axis occupation of Yugoslavia, but also to create one multi-ethnic communist state to replace the monarchy. We would like to thank you for the support you have given us over the last five years. Today, you are more than one million history lovers on this channel. We are grateful and humbled to achieve this important milestone. The responsibility well that comes with such a number is immense, and it forces us to produce better and better videos on this channel. And on another. We have seen that many of you are also interested in geography, politics, curiosities, or general knowledge. Therefore, we invite you to check out and subscribe to our second channel called Mastering Knowledge. You will find some interesting videos there, some links to history, and many others are to be made. So, subscribe if you find the channel interesting, and thank you so much again for all the support. Well deserved. The first to benefit Tito's movement was his multi-ethnic inclusivity. Instead of appealing to one ethnic group as other resistance movements such as the Chetniks had done, the Yugoslav partisans aimed to include the whole of Yugoslavia. Utilizing the philosophy of brotherhood and unity, Tito was able to successfully rally support from all throughout the contemporary kingdom of Yugoslavia. The part um, I just want to say uh, Albania, which it doesn't, is a very interesting country. I'd like to learn more about. So. Partisan rally support from all throughout the contemporary kingdom of Yugoslavia. The partisans even went as far as to grant amnesty to anyone who left the Chetniks or Axis to join their own movement, maintaining an atmosphere of unity for all. This not only increased the numbers within the organization, but also greatly increased enthusiasm. There was so much to gain or to lose depending on the outcome of the resistance's efforts, which created a strong sense of passion for saving the current kingdom and creating a new future for the Yugoslavian state. Additionally, communism was becoming increasingly popular throughout Yugoslavia, mm. and since the new future that Tito and his partisans wanted was a communist one, this only served as yet another motivation for the resistance. Due to these factors, the Yugoslav partisans were by no means a small resistance group. Instead, it spread across every ethnic group within Yugoslavia and became a nationwide movement that started to resemble an actual army more than anything else. It's estimated that before the start of 1945, the Yugoslav partisans numbered a total of 650,000 men with four field armies and 52 divisions. While this still left them dangerously outnumbered by the axe. Bones away. 
52 divisions. While this still left them dangerously outnumbered by the Axis occupiers, it was nonetheless more than a minute resistance movement and a contributing factor to their ultimate success. Beyond the formation, organization, and related details of the Yugoslav partisans, there were additional benefits to their strategy and geography. When the Germans first invaded Yugoslavia in 1941, they were of course focused on the occupation, but were also distracted by their other goals and war fronts. This meant that as the occupation began, the Yugoslav resistance managed to come together and begin their response without being completely wiped out by the German forces. No okay, that makes sense. Um, it seems like, you know, the, the South southeastern front for germany is the absolute least of their problems and so that makes sense how uh being where they are gives them a better chance at uh starting resistance than than elsewhere um i mean he's got northern africa to worry about italy obviously is uh trying to pull its weight here doing the best it can um and you know obviously it has the west to deal with um and it has the biggest front and biggest issue for them, which is the Eastern Front. So that makes sense. Knowing where their advantages and disadvantages stood, the partisans initially adopted a guerrilla warfare approach to dealing with the Germans. This proved to be a wise decision, not only due to the numerical disadvantage of the partisans, but also because they were assisted by the often mountainous and hilly terrain. While the Germans did make multiple attempts at suppressing the resistance, they didn't do enough, and as the success of the Yugoslav partisans grew, so did their support and members. By the latter half of the war, this additional support actually came from the Allies. At the start, the Allies had chosen to support the Chetnik resistance, which wasn't exactly on friendly terms with the partisans. But as the latter gained traction and began to impress the Allied leaders, the roles changed. In April of 1941, Winston Churchill sent a message to the people of Yugoslavia. Oh, hold on. As the latter gained traction and began to impress the Allied leaders, the roles changed. In April of 1941, Winston Churchill sent a message to the people of Yugoslavia, which ended with, The British Empire is fighting with you, mm -hmm. and behind us is the great democracy of the USA, with its vast and ever-increasing resources. However hard the fight, our victory is assured. By this point, the Allies were providing both moral and material support to both the Chetniks and Yugoslav partisans, but due to the increasing preference for the partisans, the Chetniks slowly received less and less in comparison. By 1943 and the Tehran Conference, the partisans were recognized by the Allies as the legitimate national liberation force in Yugoslavia. In response, more military and material support was then given to the partisans and their fight against the Germans. Furthermore, as the years went on, the partisans' numbers were steadily increasing still, and it's believed that in 1945, Tito had amassed around 800,000 supporters for his cause. With a growing fighting force and support from the Allies, the partisans now managed to increase their resistance even further and continued to repel the Germans and retake Yugoslavia bit by bit. Interesting. So when it comes to, I, I love geography, okay? And I, I, I love geography just because I love geography and also because it really, really helps with history, with me. I'm, I'm trying to learn about history as much as I can and, um, and, and I find it fascinating, okay? And in the Balkans or in, in Southeastern Europe, there is a really strange... Uh, either plateau or depression right here. I, I hope you can see where my cursor is right now. It's like we're, we're, you can see the, the yellow, the purple, the brown, the darker purple, the lighter purple, and then there's this teal color. And in the middle of the teal color, like to the right, top right of this black skull flag here, <clears throat> voice crack uh, here, is this giant like valley. And I know it's not just this map that maybe I, I see it all the time on different maps. Is there's this just this giant flat area in the it just randomly plop in the middle of all of these mountains. And is that in Hungary? I'm not exactly sure. 
but uh, interesting. These factors, the effort of multi-ethnic appeal, growing communist support, sheer numbers, wise tactics, and allied help all contributed to why the Yugoslav partisans managed to be so impressively successful. Additionally, other details may have played a further role, such as the fact that the Yugoslav partisans were known to mobilize many women, not just men. They also were not an official state military, and since they were part of a movement as well, they often gained civilian support due to what they stood for. Many civilians in the war zones additionally felt compelled to choose sides between the Axis, Chetniks, and the Partisans, which meant more opportunity for increased support. This doesn't even account for the fact that, as stated earlier, the Partisans were willing to welcome former supporters of the Axis and Chetniks into their united movement. More factors may include supposed methods used by Josip Tito, such as his willingness to incite cruelty from the Germans. Knowing that their vengeance for even a single killed German would be dramatic and heavy-handed, Tito would supposedly trigger such a response by the Germans intentionally. That way, the Yugoslav people would see the injustice of the Axis and join the partisan cause. Tito also managed to capture mass amounts of Italian equipment, which was later surrendered to the Allies, leaving their formerly occupied Yugoslav territories open. While the remaining Axis forces quickly seized them, the equipment still made it to the partisans instead. Another significant factor that came near the end of the war, and therefore the resistance, was the Allied military action in Yugoslavia. Since the partisans were fighting on the same side as the winning team, they received a major boost when the Soviet army entered Yugoslavia and began to push the Axis troops out. Fighting alongside the USSR, the team, they received a major boost when the Soviet army entered Yugoslavia and began to push the Axis troops out. Fighting alongside the USSR, the partisans began to take more and more Yugoslav territory back, and the Allies pushed the Germans further and further out of the region until their ultimate surrender. Guys, the 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 Russian advances on Germany at the end of the war always amazes me. Maybe it shouldn't because I might be answering my own question here. Because, I, I mean, the German war machine, you know, with the U.S. landing and, and Britain and, and Canada landing in France, Normandy, and, um, you know, most of the British or most of the uh, German war machine being kind of spent on, on their last kind of push to the, uh, uh, to the oil fields in Russia. And we, but it always amazes me that even though they lost tens of millions of people, they, at the end, they're still able to conjure up enough forces to just enter all of these places and just sweep the Nazis out of there. It's, it's amazing. The aftermath of the war saw the establishment of the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia and the ultimate conclusion to the Yugoslav partisan resistance. The partisans had been effective in both fighting back against the Axis as well as in their goal to establish a Yugoslavian socialist state. Their success in the second step came from the building popularity of the communist ideology and the remarkable support that the partisan cause had already gained throughout their efforts to save Yugoslavia and all of its people people, regardless of ethnicity. By the end of the war, the partisans had earned themselves a marvelous reputation and eventually became the official army after the establishment of the socialist state. Really interesting. Um, I, I like to think, you know, World War II is, is, is a topic that I've and infatuated with long before I started uh, the YouTube channel. Long before. Yeah, believe it or not, guys. I know, shocking. I graduated college four years with a history degree. Hard to believe, I know. Um, but uh, it, it, history was never my passion. Um, I, I just had a lot of uh, anxiety and, and depression issues in college, and I wasn't sure what major I wanted to pick. I, I went into college having no clue what I wanted to do. And um, I thought it'd be good. Like, I, I love science. I wanted to go into, like, chemistry, pharmacy, physics, stuff like that. Found out pretty soon that uh, I just, I was not smart enough to do that stuff um, at a certain level. I just, like, okay, I, 
I'm not smart enough, nor do I care about this enough to continue. And then eventually I transferred schools and just wanted to get a degree. History was there. It fit a lot of my credits. And so I thought, hey, fine, history, sure. And I eventually passed enough classes. Or uh, It's not that I got bad grades in college. I, I didn't at all. I was pretty good in college, actually. Um, but I, I ended up finishing with, with a history degree. And ever since, I've kind of fallen in love with history, you know? But World War II has always been a big, interesting topic of mine. And um, I always like to think I know a lot about World War II. But when it comes to stuff like this, I knew almost nothing. A while back, I did watch a video on uh, Tito. That was good. Um, but great channel. Nolegia, awesome. Have I seen this? Imagine if four of the world... I don't think I have. Have I? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Awesome video, guys. Hope you're doing well. See you next time.